that little montage you just seen of the morning routine which is get up at seven o'clock usually my body clock will get me up between six between half six and seven i'll get up as i'm doing right now i'm gonna make a coffee i wash my face i get all that all that good shit done and um, yesterday was a rest day so i basically get up and make it routine to go and get some steps and cardio into the gym and um, make sure we can keep that heart health on point as we start to push body weight up. Last year when we pushed body weight right up, I think my, my, that bulk was from 80 kilograms up to 106 kilo. So when I got up to 106 kilo, fuck me, I was really unfit. Um, I, I would walk upstairs and I'd feel out of breath, you know, carry an extra 26 kilos of weight is a lot. And I didn't really do cardio, so keeping cardio in, having a morning coffee right now, gonna sit down, gonna watch some YouTube, gonna chill, and then what I'm gonna show you is my big bulking oats bowl. How to make the best bulking oats. What am I gonna call these fuckers? The best, the best bulking protein oats or the best protein, the, 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 the fucking hell man. They taste really good and I'm gonna show you how I make them and make them look class, right? So stay tuned, keep watching. Keep watching. self explanatory today. Get your oats, weigh them out. 100 grams. Well, not quite, but I'm not opening a new bag for the sake of four grams. <laughs> um, this, I'm going to put some almond milk in it because the milk gives it a bit of a thicker, frothier taste. So a bit of milk, the rest of it water. Again, if you're having oats and you can't stomach them, if you're bulking, which I know when I'm bulking sometimes I can't, you don't need to fill the water up to the top. The more water you put in, the more that'll expand. Just have less water in it, less liquid, and it won't be as voluminous, all right? I'm a fat prick though, so I'm really liking my shit being really voluminous because I'm really hungry all the time. So that's how much water I put in it. Boom. Put that in the microwave. Three minutes, take it out, give it a stir. Another two minutes, give it a stir. Another minute, and then that should be it. All good. And then we'll do the final shebang to make it all class. The next step is we make a whey protein paste. This is some protein powder. Okay, we're gonna add a little bit of water, bit by bit, and keep on stirring that until it makes this thick, pasty sort of texture. And this is what we pour on top of the oats. We will use this stuff here. This protein powder we'll put in the actual oats, but this protein will be a topping. So we get two different protein powders. Call me a snob if you want, but two different protein powders. This is white chocolate raspberry. Tastes fucking nice. This is an isolate protein. This is a honey flavour and it's pretty good so once that's all done you what the final product is looking like while this gets cooked. Bit of dark chocolate on the oats okay pour that over on top of the oats over the dark chocolate and this melts the dark chocolate even more and it gives you this nice chocolate cover coating on top of the oats and it fucking levels up the oat game. That with some raspberries in it and I'll show you the final product when it is finito. This is such a good fucking meal, man. I used to hate oats, and this has made me fucking love them. I better get these out of the micro. Also, if you want to have a fat pump in the gym, if this is a pre-workout meal, add some salt into the oats when it's cooking. Not too much, not too much, but a good bit of salt. Salt, bit of salt. Get the sodium in, which means the pumps in the gym will be fucking awesome. Just for reference, this is what, if you can see, the paste looks like, the protein paste. Right, by the way, my fucking battery died. Once that protein is mixed, you get your raspberries, half them out. That'll do, 75 grams. Gonna mix that all in. Once that's all mixed, the raspberries are amongst that. Dark chocolate on, put this in the micro, just to melt the dark chocolate a bit more. Sugar-free caramel sauce. Fucking yeah. Protein, put loads, and then we add that on. Yeah, man, that's fucking nice, man. Look at that, look at the dark chocolate just 
Sue Hoffman. Mm. About to go to the gym and to upper upper body. I actually really like in these upper body sessions. I used to do push pull legs, upper lower chest and back together um, but this new approach has been nice anyway that's a topic for another video I feel like I'm always rambling about that training split but today's pre-workout is some dodgy thing whenever I go to this supplement shop Pit Stop Nutrition if you've never heard of it and you live in Glasgow surrounding areas go to it they stock all the best supplements and you sometimes get a free sample of pre-workout uh, I think this is the ghost pre-workout so I'm going to have this in some water and hopefully it gives me a ginormous pump. So yeah, next clip you're going to see is some upper body training. Enjoy. Jumping in with a voice over. Not too sure how the audio sounds on this. Hopefully it sounds good. So, upper body day. This is a recurring theme for myself doing the upper days. Um, I used to do push, pull, legs, some sort of variation of that. Uh, change things up. Now currently doing three upper sessions a week, with a big bias being towards chest and delts. So every one of those upper sessions that I do has got chest work in it, and delt work and arm work, and one thing for back, two things for back. Um, the specialisation block right now is just chest and delt, so we're trying to blow that up over the next 12-15 weeks, and then we'll put some more back work in, and maybe bring the chest and delt stuff down, alright? Anyway, the voiceover is the workout, so started off here with flat hammer press, um, good movement, just try to provide a good stimulus to the sternal fibres of the chest. Um, this plate loaded one is a nice machine, it kind of converges, which means as I press up, the elbows get closer towards the body, which is almost like what a fly does, so we can, we're able to stretch the pec at the bottom, but we're also able to contract at the top almost, so solid movement in that. I think that was a rest pause set, so we've done 10 to 15, we rest 15 seconds and then we go again till we can't go. Um, followed up by a cuffed clavicular fly, so we are trying to bias the upper chest fibres here. There's not really any movement like this with regards to we can really just drive the elbow across that clavicular part of the chest to really bias those upper chest fibres. Um, most people lack upper chest. Obviously, when it comes to bodybuilding, you know, we're going to be more biased and we're going to be more picky with trying to gain more muscle. If you're just an average Joe, you do not need to bother with this shit. But if you do want to get a movement that gives you a big, thick upper chest, this is the one. The cuffs essentially just mean we don't need to use the hands. We can take the whole elbow from the elbow down to the hand out of the movement, which gives us a little bit of a more internal feel to the chest here. We don't need to think about the grip slipping as much, we can just think about driving the elbows towards one another, which is the function of the chest, is just to get elbows touching, elbows to the middle of the body. It doesn't matter where hands go, that does not dictate what part of the chest we work, it's all about where the elbow travels towards that body, all right? This felt fucking good, man. Very, very good. These cables are goated. So, up next is my only back thing for this session. We have got an upper back row, chest supported. We know when we've got a chest support with a movement, we are a little bit more locked in, a little bit more stable, and we can just produce a little bit more force to that muscle. Typically, the more locked in you are on machines, machines are gonna be a bit more favorable because you can really isolate the muscle. And as somebody that's trying to grow a shit ton of muscle, the more we can isolate it, the better. Here, all I'm thinking about is just driving those elbows back behind my body and squeezing every last part of that upper back, all right? As soon as I can't squeeze the upper back, then I know I'm done. Like, I could have fought more swingy reps here, but I would have been no upper back stimulus. And then a wee low-key putting the plates away seemed to make myself look good. Cuffs again in the cables. Um, that lady has stolen my cables, RIP. Um, so, lion cuff raises. These are a movement you probably won't see a lot, but again, the cuff just takes the hand position out it. We can just think about pushing through the elbows, which only matters when we try to target muscles, really, is elbow path. Um, so the goal here, lying down on the bench at a small incline, we're just imagining we're doing dumbbell raises here. Essentially, we're challenging the delts, and we're kind of lengthened, we're kind of stretched. Um, so the goal here is basically just to put as much effort into those delts as possible. Uh, we're stuck in, we've got a bench support, 
we're nice and stable and I can basically obliterate those delts. And that was the bulk of it. We're onto some arms now. A nice wee cable curl here. I've got a D handle on this. Simply being, you do not need to use the D handle. My wrists can handle it fairly well. Um, I wonder how many times my lisp has went mental during this this voiceover. Wrists, wrists, wrists. Anyway, D handle on that just so I can rotate that wrist, those wrists. Um, because sometimes when load gets a little bit heavier or I'm taking that rep to a complete 10 out of 10 failure point, um, if they're stuck in the same position, my joints, my wrist joints can get a little bit of a of a beat up in that. So yeah, I can rotate them, freely rotate, less strain on the joints, and I can still absolutely obliterate those biceps. So yeah, this was a hard set. Um, what have we got? Tricep push down, finishing off the session with this. Good movement. Again, single arm because it can line up the joints a bit better and I can just isolate that tricep a little bit better here. Alright. Um, the goal here is just to contract really hard. I want to pause when I'm contracted, really squeeze the shit out of those triceps. Alright, if you've never tried these, give them a bash. Alright. Apart from that, guys, that is the upper body session. Again, I'm just dabbling and getting used to doing the videos that I've not really done before. Um, this is some posing at the end of the workout, feeling good. Body weight is slowly on the rise. On the next video, you'll see a bulking update. Alright, but this is how we're looking. That was the session. Thank you for watching, make those bulky notes if you've not, you'll thank me.